Well, good morning to you. Morning. Today is the first day of Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. It is the month of May, and tomorrow we'll be having a special session that really recognizes how important the Asian American and Pacific Islander community is to Montgomery County. 15% of our county is Asian American Pacific Islander. And so we will have a video and then we will hear their stories on the issues that are important to them because as you can imagine with every group, everybody has their own sets of issues. And so we will collectively hear from their perspective the things that they struggle with. Let's move to other matters like transportation. So we have several transportation items to talk about, not the least of which is the Purple Line. Um, you may know that our Congress, bless its heart, has a different point of view than the Trump administration when it comes to things like the Purple Line and has funded the Purple Line. All we need is for our federal judge to get out of the way to please rule. He's had this matter before him now for four months. It's the only thing standing in the way of our being able to go forward. So we reiterate our call for the federal judge to act as he sees fit, but please act. Even if it was a negative ruling, we would at least have something to appeal at that point in time and to chart a path forward but it is in not acting that makes it so difficult for any of us to move forward. But I think it's a really very positive sign that our Congress came through for projects like the Purple Line throughout the country and made sure that those dollars are there, notwithstanding that the Trump administration had asked that those projects not be funded. So there is a path forward here. We just need the judge to finally get out of the way. Secondly, we will be meeting on Wednesday to hear from our board members on Metro. Um, most of you appreciate that we had a meeting last week at COG in which our technical group released their report and recommendations, both in terms of how much is needed and their recommendation as to how that need should be met. That is a recommendation only. It is now up to the COG political leadership, not the, quote, technocrats, although these were not technocrats. These were our CAOs and other people from throughout the region that worked real hard on this project. Um, I think how Virginia goes will determine whether we are successful. And what I've said publicly is that the funding that is chosen by each jurisdiction can be different. Northern Virginia can go one path. Montgomery County and Prince George's County and Maryland can go another path and DC could go another path. What's important is to divide up the dollars and to have a source of funding that is dedicated so that you can bond it. Um, the will General Manager has identified $500 million a year that he needs just for capital. The COG Technical Group identified $650 million, both for capital and maintenance, and identified that a 1% sales tax would achieve that purpose. Um, I personally believe that the 1% sales tax is something that Montgomery County and Prince George's County could live with. Uh, I've been in consultation with our county executive and feel that we and Prince George's County could embrace that approach. But what has to happen now is to get our region together so that we can make this happen next year. Starting in January, we have to be real clear as to what we are asking of each of the jurisdictions to make this happen because Metro cannot fail. There is no plan B. Other transportation issues. We will be taking up on Thursday BRT on Route 29. I want to share with you that one of the privileges of being in Montgomery County is that we have a bunch of very bright people. So we had two people that testified, Sean Emerson and Sebastian Smoot, who testified how they felt BRT on 29 could be accommodated by shrinking 
the lanes that exist today by one foot, getting them to 10 foot lanes and putting a single track in the median for BRT that would be a dedicated BRT lane in the middle, in the median. Um, that testimony was really very persuasive. Our professional staff likes it, my colleagues like it, and while we have a federal grant that is going to proceed on a separate track, um, this would be what we consider to be the logical follow-up to that project because part of the pushback we've received on BRT on 29 is that it isn't the quality of BRT that people aspire to because anytime you go in mixed traffic uh, that makes it very difficult and there is a lot of mixed traffic on Route 29 but this would obviate that and so you would have an extraordinarily high quality BRT system that we think uh, has a great deal of promise. We've talked to the state about it. We've talked to my colleagues about it. Mr. Elrich and I uh, have had a number of conversations about it, and we feel like we will come up with language that makes it clear that this is, if you will, the, the next generation on BRT 29. Tomorrow, in addition to Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month, we will be taking up the business, the what we had called the Business Services Center, which was an effort on the part of my colleagues and I to make it clear that we think that serving our small business community still needs to take place in county government. When we created the Economic Development Corporation, there was at that time five of us who felt that no matter what the Economic Development Corporation does, it's big picture, it's branding Montgomery County, it's trying to attract business. It is not taking care of the mom and pop who raises their hand and says, how do I get a sign permit? How do I do this? How do I navigate the regulations that exist in Montgomery County? That is constituent service and in judgment of many of us, a core government responsibility. So that bill will be acted upon tomorrow at full council. We've changed the name to the Business Solutions Group, which actually working with the administration, we feel that's a, a good name for it because we want to provide solutions to our business community and this will be the vehicle for doing that. With that, why don't I open it up to your questions? Did you go to the climate march this weekend? I did go to the climate march this weekend. Did you take the metro? Did I take the metro? I'm trying to remember. No, because I went to Georgetown first for an incredible sculpture on dedication by a Somerset resident who is a fabulous sculptor and who had a sculpture dedicated to Mother Earth that is now on display in Georgetown. So. So you didn't get to experience the trains every 24 minutes on the red line? I did not. Or the track problem? I did not. Um, so that, that um, single tracking was added last minute on, I believe, Friday after the uh, smoke issue on Thursday. Um, could you, do you have any words for Paul Wiedefeld for setting that up? These are, this was added to um, start going uh, to recover from all of the years that Metro hasn't supposedly taken care of parts of its tracks. Does that make sense? Yes, and we've had this conversation before. Right. Every other day, or every third day, or every fourth day, there will be a story about some piece of Metro that is not working to the satisfaction of our public, okay? That is true. Mm -hmm. And it cannot be the determining factor as to how we move forward. So there will be bad news, and the bottom line is we need to invest in this system. Mm -hmm. So both are true. I think, as I've shared with you before, the world of Paul Wiedefeld, that's not to say that there aren't mistakes that are made. I can't Monday morning quarterback that particular set of decisions, but I would say to you that I have great faith in Paul Wiedenfeld. Um, you mentioned the business solutions group. Can you explain why the services or solutions that this particular group is going to offer businesses in the county something that the Chamber of Commerce can't do? Well, the Chamber of Commerce has asked for this because this is about government regulations. So it is about assisting small businesses in navigating our county government. 
And that really isn't the responsibility of the chambers themselves. It is the responsibility of government to assist business and understanding what they are responsible for doing and making it easier for them. So you will see explicit language that the, the bill is intended to assist the business community in dealing with county government. So someone who's starting a small business in Marion County, this should be the first contact. Them, exactly. Rather than the Chamber of Commerce or the MCDC. That's right. It okay. should not be the MCDC. I mean, we need our Economic Development Corporation to really focus on the big picture and deliver on the big picture. They should not be dealing with a mom and pop that raises their hand and says, I need help with this permit. Will you be joining the Purple Line Now group tomorrow morning? I will indeed. And uh, thank you for, for raising it because that is partly the purpose of that rally tomorrow is to, to plead with the federal judge that we've done all the hard work now and render a decision up or down, but render a decision so we can get on with our business. We're in this limbo land. So our legislators, our federal congressional delegation have done their work. The state has done its work. Our county is doing its work. We need the judge to do his. In, in conjunction with that, the federal money that is now available because of congressional action, again, around $900 million? Yes, 125 for this next year. And then is there a time limit on that? In other words, have they said, look, this can only sit on the table for X amount of time. You've got to get your judge to make his decision. It's my understanding that the language in the appropriations bill referenced September, that if you don't have a f final federal funding agreement signed by September, this would not be applicable. So clearly we have until September to get this resolved. but. It's ready right now. Have you, has the county been in contact with some of these businesses? This is a public-private partnership. I don't know how, and I forget how to say it, Floron or Floor, uh, the, the corporation is going to be making cars. Are they saying, are they expressing either confusion or impatience or how are we supposed to manage? <laughs> you know, we, we thought we had a deal. Well, they're working it too, I promise you. Uh, I promise you they have enough invested in this effort to make it clear to the congressional delegation and others how important this is. So I think it is their involvement has, has played a, a positive role in getting this teed up. But as you know, the state has already invested $400 million in this project and has other dollars that they are basically front loading because the federal government has been so late to the table because of this federal judge. So there is a point in time when you wonder how long that can go on. Um, again, another reason why we need the federal judge to act. Um, BRT in the meeting, is that the plan the county's going with now? No, the plan that the county's going with now is along the outside shoulder okay. and in mixed traffic. Okay, so, well, so what's the what, That will be the next if you will, phase the next project to follow this one. Okay. So does that push back BRT at all? It point? does not push back. They actually work together. And can you give us the point to point on that? So again, no. The, one, the one, no, in terms of <laughs> <laughs> direction, we need help. Yeah. Uh, the, again, if you're going to be in the mixed traffic, from what point to what point do you stop? This, and where th you go this would meeting? obviate being in mixed traffic completely. Oh, this okay. would operate so, in the median. To be clear then, you would not do the mixed traffic part of this. You would go all well, median. So, again, what we will approve and what we have federal funding for is a project that currently is in mixed traffic, okay. in part because we could not take any additional right of way and we could not use one of the existing lanes because the traffic dynamic would have gotten so much worse. Okay, so. What this proposal does is it says we are not affecting traffic. We're not making traffic worse. In fact, we're making it better because we will have a very strong BRT running down the middle. But that's not what the federal government has funded. So that's why this is going to be a distinct project. But it works with it because we're not using any right of way. We're not doing anything that we have to undo in order to achieve this result.
How would that work for pedestrians? I mean, they'd have to cross a busy highway to get to the median. Is there any worry that, you know, with all the pedestrian deaths in the county, that this is something that can be dangerous? No. <clears throat> not worried about it? I'm not worried about it. Where would they, do we have a so design we, yet? We, we, do, we don't have a design. No, we don't have a design yet. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, I'm not yeah, I'm not worried about. We have we have BRT and medians and lots of places. This, this can be done on a highway. I'm understood. Crosswalks. I will show you the design <laughs> specs when they are available. <laughs> yeah. I haven't seen them. I'm not the engineer. I am confident that it can be done. As our DOT is confident it can be done. As the state's confident it can be done. So does DOT have to approve the median lane that in, rather than what was originally proposed? Again, it, one is going to, quote, build on the other. Okay. So consider them sequential projects. But you eventually adopt one or the other? Well, we will adopt both, is the point. We, 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 will, we will begin with the one, okay, and then we will move to the other. I think the confusion yeah. is Thank at you. one point you're going to go, let's say for the first two miles, you'll be in mixed traffic, and then you'll add that the rest of the route will be that median so design? So BRT on 29 will start in mixed traffic. And as soon as we get approval for the second project working with the state, we will immediately go to that, okay? How much there's a time lag in between the two, I can't say in this moment in time. But again, the beauty, one, it's really a quite an elegant solution, and two, it came from citizens who care deeply about this. Has that been evaluated by a track <coughs> It has been looked at by both the state and DOT preliminarily, and people are pleased with it. Were your colleagues in the county council as enthusiastic about this as you are? I believe that this hits all the right notes. But this is still tentative because you need experts to look at it, right? We need experts to look at it, and we need to move forward with the other piece first. Okay. You said a couple minutes ago that this is, well, I can't remember the words you used, but this is going to be the best that we, like, the best option, a BRT. How is mixed traffic, um, meaning that this is like an optimal solution for um, transit on Route 29? So for many of us, mixed traffic is not an optimal solution. Okay, but it was the only solution that was available to us at this moment in time, given the state's analysis of what would happen if you took uh, an existing lane of traffic. Mm -hmm. So that's why this particular proposal is so appealing, because it doesn't have an adverse impact on existing traffic. You are not taking a lane away. You are not taking right of way away. Okay? You don't need any additional right of way. This can be done in the existing right of way, just using it differently. What do you make of the criticism that the BRT would just be, you know, Metro Extra? That's more expensive. Well, I think this addresses that criticism. That's what dedicated lanes give you, that Metro Extra cannot. Totally different subject, and I know the council doesn't have direct um, control over this, but reaction to the news that about half of the Montgomery County Council of PTAs funding, the $80,000 they had sitting there, may have been embezzled. The schools, uh, PTAs, and some of the adjacent, if you will, organizations have had money issues before. What was your reaction when you heard about this case? Just sadness. I mean, the PTA leadership that I have dealt with over the course of the past year has been exemplary has advanced the interests of the school community as well, if not better, than any leadership I've seen in the past 10 years. So that this took place is, I think, sad for everybody who wants a love to have to deal with this kind of issue. I have great confidence in the leadership of the PTA communities. You know, somebody did something wrong, and people weren't aware of it. And fortunately, they 
are now on top of it, and now I'm sure there will be consequences. But the PTA community has been well served by the, their leadership. <coughs> Which leadership when? The people that were the president and you know, Paul Geller and Melissa. I don't know Melissa's last name. McKenna. McKenna. I mean, these are two of the finest representatives the PTA community has had in terms of its interaction with the council. And I can't imagine that there's a higher priority for the PTA community than, in fact, ensuring that the county council is supportive of the issues that they care about. And they have been terrific. They did their work as really in an exemplary fashion. Hi, good morning, Mr. Berliner. Did you get an update last week on the bus depot relocation? I did not. I did not. I have not heard a thing. And I bet that's just the right answer, too. <laughs> well, I understand that they, there is um, something happening. Well, you, under, you understand more than I do. If I could go back to the um, topic of Metro, I'm sure you remember the discussion for, uh, started by Paul Wiedefeld about uh, eliminating late night hours and all the uh, uproar that caused and ups upset. Yes? Yes. Okay, so Paul Wiedefeld said on Thursday at a uh, news conference that, the, that um, the smoke incident that was on Thursday morning, that was one of the reasons why Paul Wiedefeld is asking for um, elimination of late night hours because Metro historically has never inspected the tracks for this problem such as that which occurred Thursday. So he's changing the schedules to eliminate these issues. Do you have any comments on that? I do not. Okay. And um, then the one more added on point is that was scheduled to begin in July, but now it's starting early because there was a smoke incident Friday. Um, I guess that's not a question. But <laughs> on that? No. Again, I have great confidence in, in Mr. Wiedenfeld, and I supported his desire to have more time on the tracks. <laughs> and he clearly needs more time on the tracks. And so the sooner he can get at this work, the better we will all be. What do you make of the county executive's explanation for the 1% cut in his budget from nonprofits? He just said it was a clerical error. What do you make of that? I accept the county executive at face value. I have no reason to believe that the county executive was not stating what was his intent and in that <clears throat> he called me to tell me that there had been a mistake, that it was his fault with respect to the mistake and so far as he communicated in a manner that led to the budget being presented in the way in which it was and that that was not really what he intended. He meant a 1% reduction from the 2% that we had approved last year, not an absolute 1% reduction. So it is what it is and by owning that mistake it makes my work a little easier because I don't have to come up with $1.2 million to correct his mistake. He's going to do that. Um, so what, um, I'm sorry if, if this is going back over what, what you already discussed, but like what could um, D.C. and Maryland possibly do to affect decisions by jurisdictions in Virginia with regard to dedicated funding or does everybody just have to wait and see whether or not they decide to approve one? I think we all are, need to work together. This mm -hmm. is a regional issue and Virginia needs to appreciate that it is part of a region mm -hmm. and so it has this is not for any one individual jurisdiction, hopefully, to veto, but to work together to find a way to get to yes. Because so clearly the region needs to do that. What if, what if they do say no? We'll, uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll find out that in about eight months. Okay, so it's okay. some time till then. But until then, we're going to lay the groundwork for a successful effort. Any updates on when security is going to be um, changed here in the building? There probably is. Uh, you can direct that to Mr. Farber, but I can't remember in this moment. Mr. Could Farber, do you have a, an update on that? Uh, yes. We're uh, kind of hoping that uh, we'll be able to open up the screening stations next month. So next month. 
What's the cost on that associated with the updating the security? Do you have a price tag on that? Mr. Farber? Right. We can get you that. Yeah. We have that in the yeah, memo. A quick question on, is that asbestos abatement going on on the fourth floor and the third? The work here in the building? Mr. Farber? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Perhaps I need to talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs>